before we delve into the chapter i wanted to show you a really neat science trick with some magic water and these beakers the magic water is going to change colors from 1 to 2 to 3 to 4 and 5 what's up guys i am geeta we are going to be doing a uh, science Class tenth today, we are going to be learning about acids, bases, and salts. We are going to be doing this with loads of experiments, and hopefully, it's very easy. So, scientists have all sorts of classification for matter. They classify it into solids, liquids, and gases. For things, they classify it into living, non-living. Living things are further classified. That's it's one of the scientists' favorite hobbies. For chemicals, what they started doing is they realized some chemicals are sour, and they call this acid. acid actually is derived from the greek word asa which means sour they also realized sour things were corrosive in nature and there you go you had the birth of the name acid then came along some chemicals that negated the properties of acid when mixed acid wasn't sour anymore they actually tasted bitter acids lost their property of corrosion and those were antacids by the name as as suggest they are anti acids we refer to them today as bases we have acids and bases acids like i said are corrosive and sour bases are bitter and they are soapy to touch the most famous example of a base is a soap so i have two chemicals over here one of them is an acid one of them is a base can you tell me which one it becomes extremely difficult to just know which one's an acid and base by looking at them it's not always safe to taste or smell the chemicals so uh, scientists came up with a way to let us know which one is an acid and which one is a base uh, they observed there were certain chemicals in nature that had a color and upon action of an acid or base they changed their color this could indicate to us uh, whether it was an acid or a base and uh, that's why these chemicals are known as indicators i am sure you must have heard the most common one is litmus we have a blue litmus and we have a red litmus the blue litmus if i put it in the acid it turns red and a red litmus on application turns blue in presence of a base now i'm going to keep the acid over here the red symbolizes that the blue litmus turns red and the base over here and we're going to try out some other indicators so the next indicator we have is phenolphthalein all right let's pour it in an acidic solution and we observe no color change over here all right let's pour it in a basic solution and you can see it turns a hot pink all right the next indicator i have is the universal indicator i have changed my beakers over here my acidic solution let's see what happens when i put it in the acidic solution As you can see it turns red and let's see what happens to it in the basic solution it turns a deep blue to a violet and in fact initially what we did is we have a whole spectrum of colors that the universal indicator gives us when we did our magic trick initially all the different colors were actually made by different phs of the acids and bases i have changed my beakers again and i have one more indicator over here methyl orange let's see what happens to it in an acidic solution as you can see it turns reddish and in a basic solution it turns yellowish so we have four indicators that we've done so far we've done the litmus we've done phenolphthalein we've done universal indicator and we've done methyl orange So to recap we have four indicators we have the litmus the litmus turns red in an acidic solution and blue in a basic solution we have the universal indicator this gives us a whole spectrum of colors and it basically goes from if i go from basic to acidic it goes with your we have a deep blue on this end and we have red on this end we have methyl orange that is actually that turns red in an acidic solution and yellow in a basic solution finally we have phenolphthalein it's transparent uh neutrally it's transparent when it's in, a, in an acidic solution and it goes pink hot pink when it is in a basic solution 
All right, so let's talk about the importance of pH. Uh, the universal indicator helps us determine what the pH of a particular solution is. Uh, we are going to test a wide range of things over here to know what the pH of these solutions is. And we are going to be starting with water. I have four different sorts of waters over here. I have distilled water uh, or deionized and demineralized water. I have mineral water over here. I have water from the swimming pool over here. You may know water in the swimming pool is added with chlorine. So we are going to test the pH of that. And then I have carbonated water over here. Uh, let's try. Let's try putting testing the pH of all of them. So distilled water, as you can see, this is green. Green is pH 7. So distilled water is neutral. Next up is mineral water. Now, mineral water depends on where you are from. It may be acidic, it may be ba basic, it depends on the sort of minerals. I do not know what this is, so let's check it out. And our mineral water, again, happens to be neutral. Next, we have water from our swimming pool. And you can see immediately that this turns slightly orangish. This water is slightly acidic from our swimming pool. And then we have carbonated water. It's Sprite, Coke, you can try anything. We just took Sprite because it's clear. As you can see, all the fizz, that's the carbon dioxide escaping. And if we test this, you can see that this water is also slightly acidic. We just saw the pH of four different sorts of waters. Let's get a little bit more into pH levels, why they are important and how they affect the life around us and everything. Now, human beings operate within a very specific, in fact, all living organ, organisms operate between a very specific pH range that is between 7 and 7.8. So most disinfectants that kill bacteria, that kill germs are out of this pH range, even if it's too acidic or it's too basic. I have a few things over here with me that I'd like us to test. We have uh, chlorine water. We already tested this. We have bleach. We have a sanitizer and we have vinegar. We have uh, all of these things are used as cleaning agents. So let's see what's the pH. All right. So first up is uh, chlorinated water. As you can see, this turns universal indicator red, orangish red, which means this is acidic. Let's try the bleach next. You can see as I dip the universal indicator into bleach, it gives me a slightly yellow color, but the color immediately dissipates. I'm never, I'm not really supposed to get a yellow color over here. This happens because bleach is a very strong oxidizing agent. It just takes the color off. It takes the color off from universal indicator. This is something I can't test with my universal indicator. Let's try the vinegar. Do you all know the other name of vinegar? Vinegar is actually known as acetic acid so we already know what color this is going to be and as you can see we get a red color over here next we have the sanitizer over here let's check the sanitizer and we can see that this is slightly acidic the sanitizer is slightly acidic it just gives us a yellow uh, color Moving on, let's go to the digestive system. Let's talk about the digestive system of human beings. We've heard that we have hydrochloric acid in our stomach, and this is extremely acidic. The acid environment of our stomach helps us break down. Let's say this is a food particle, and as soon as I put this in, you will see how the food particle starts disintegrating. So the acid in our food really help us break down the food just to check. Let's check whether this is acidic or basic. We have a strong red color over here telling us that it's a strong acid. If there is too much of an acid in our stomach, what we do is we have something known as milk of magnesia or we take tablets for acidity. If we try testing the pH of this, you can see that we get a blue solution which basically neutralizes the acids in our stomach. The breakdown of our food doesn't just happen in our stomach, it happens even in our mouth. Uh, our uh, mouth also has a very acidic environment and that is why there is a lot of tooth decay. So to protect that, to protect ourselves against that, we use toothpastes naturally to protect ourselves against an acidic environment. Our toothpastes are designed to be basic. So if I put a little bit of indicator in this, we can see that it turns blue, which is why we need to make sure that we brush our teeth regularly so that our tooth doesn't decay more. Finally, I also wanted to talk to you about soils. We have, we have soil 
and there's a lot of organic matter in uh, soil there's a lot of dead and decayed animals there the bacteria feed upon this and as they uh, disintegrate this again it, it makes the soil quite acidic so rich soil is usually acidic i'm not sure what this soil is so let's check this soil we have a nice plant growing here the soil sample was taken from here and as you can see the soil sample is also acidic but not all plants grow very well in an acidic uh, soil so we do have some fertilizers that are quite basic and if your soil hap if your so soil happens to be basic there are also uh, fertilizers that are acidic so far we've learned that acids are sour they are corrosive we've learned that bases are bitter they are slippery to touch but what makes an acid an acid and what makes a base a base to understand this i have over here uh, an acid i've put in some universal indicator i have over here a ph neutral uh, substance which is basically water and i have a base over here next what i have is i have a circuit over here right now this circuit is open over here so as soon as i close it with a conductor with a coin over here in my case a metal you can see that it lights up this closes the circuit allowing electricity to pass now why does a metal uh, close the circuit because electrons that are charged particles easily pass through the metal let's check if there are any charged particles that help close the circuit over here yes i'm just going to dip this in water let's check it over here and yes we can see that the light lights up again and finally let's try it in this solution and we can see that the light hardly lights up i can i can barely see the light over here okay now why does this happen the acid actually contains a lot of h plus ions this is what all acids have in common the h plus ions combine with the water to make h3o positive and this the h3o ions are actually responsible for the acidity of anything the h3o ions are are the things that act on the indicator and convert and change their color similarly a base a base has oh minus ions an acid is known as a proton donor because it donates a positive charge and a base is known as a proton acceptor while a neutral solution it has hardly any free charges it does not have h3o it does not have oh minus and when you put the light in a neutral solution it does not light up bases are slippery but i have a dry soap over here and it doesn't really seem slippery to me i take a red litmus paper if i rub it on it there is no color change on the litmus paper but if i dip this in water the soap is quite slippery and now if i take this red litmus paper i rub it we can see that it has become blue parts of it at least we can see that the red litmus has become blue now this shows us the importance of water until and unless we do not have water bases by itself do not produce any oh negative ions so water is extremely important for bases to release their oh minus ions so before we wrap this segment up there's one thing that i needed you to take note of we have concentrated acids and we have dilute acids we have strong acids and we have weak acids concentrated and dilute are two opposites which have different meanings from what strong and weak is a concentrated acid is just an acid that is mostly acid and not really water a dilute acid is something that has a lot of water content and very little acid that is concentrated and dilute now what is a strong acid a strong base or a weak acid and a weak base mean a strong acid is an acid that completely ionizes itself okay so it's going to break down all of its molecules to give you h plus ions weak acid is something that does not completely ionize it only partially ionizes most of it remains bonded they do not disintegrate into water so something like acetic acid it's a weak acid only 20% of its ions now no matter how much i concentrate it that means no matter how much i suck the water out of it still only 20% of its ions are going to dissociate in the water we learned that acids are corrosive acids are sour acids produce h plus ions these h plus ions combine with the water to make acids acidic and we learned about their action on indicators it turns blue litmus red universal indicators turn red in the presence of acids those are the properties of acids next up bases bases taste bitter 
They are slippery when you touch them. They produce hydroxyl ions in the presence of water and they turn litmus paper blue. All right, guys, that's a wrap. I hope the video made acids and bases a little easier to learn. If it did, please share it with your friends. I'm, everybody could uh, do with making stuff simpler. Uh, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment. If you think you can get to the questions of other students, please answer them. There's nothing like gonna that's going to help you learn, like actually interacting out there. And please subscribe for more magic and science videos. Thank you.